Hey guys, in this video, let's talk about the Simpsons Paradox, which is another probability problem that the data scientists often confront in job interviews and in their everyday work. Simpsons Paradox is a common occurrence when we look at data across multiple levels or categories. It is an issue that involves conditional probability, and it's called a paradox because it's not very intuitive to understand. Nevertheless, understanding Simpsons Paradox is important for correctly interpreting data. So in this video, I will give you some examples to help you understand what it is and what the implications are when we deal with data in reality. Let me first give you the formal or academic version of the paradox. We observe that the probability of A given B and C is less than probability of A given B complement and C, and the probability of A given B and C complement is less than probability of A given B complement and C complement. But probability of A given B is larger than probability of A given B complement. As you can see, this formula contains conditional probabilities and the complement as denoted by the C subscript. I will not dive into this formal definition because it's not super helpful for understanding its practical implications. Instead, I want to give you a more practical form of the definition. First, we will define simple 2x2 contingency tables for subgroups of a sample. And then we will explain the patterns within the tables that indicate Simpson's paradox. Suppose that we have i equals 1, 2, 3, n mutually exclusive subgroups and ai, bi, ci, and di is a 2 by 2 contingency table for subgroup i with 0 less than or equal to ai less than or equal to bi, and 0 is less than or equal to ci less than or equal to di. We can add the tables together to create capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D is the same as sum of ai, sum of bi, sum of ci, and sum of di, respectively. Simpson's paradox occurs if one of the following is true. Essentially, when we compare the sum of the numerators with the sum of the denominators, the sign of the inequality we observed within the subgroups is reversed. Let me give you a simple example with only two groups of data to illustrate it. We can see that this data meets the criteria for Simpson's paradox. In group 1, a1 over b1 is 10 over 99, which is less than c1 over d1, which is 1 over 1. In group 2, a2 over b2 is 0 over 1, which is less than c2 over d2, which is 1 over 99. But when we look at both groups together, capital A, the sum of ai over the sum of bi is 10 over 100, which is larger than the sum of ci over the sum of di, which is 2 over 100. This is a simple example of Simpson's paradox. Now that you understand the definition of Simpson's paradox, Let's see how it applies to data science and what its practical implications are. Let's consider an example closer to real life. Suppose we have two advertisements and we want to find out which one is better. So we collect data from two groups of users and compared the clicks rate of both of them. For those that don't know the clicks rate, it's a ratio of the number of clicks that an ad receives divided by the total number of times it is shown, or what is commonly referred to as impressions. In other words, it measures how likely an ad is to be clicked after being shown to viewers. For example, if an ad has one click among 100 views, then the click's rate will be 1%. A high click's rate means that users find an ad relevant and helpful. An ad with a higher click's rate is considered to be a better quality ad. Now, back to our example, let's look at the data. In both groups of users, the click's rate is higher for the first ad than the second ad. In group 1, 44 over 700 for ad 1 is larger than 75 over 1200 for ad 2. In group 2, 46 over 800 for ad 1 is larger than 17 over 300 for ad 2. Based on this analysis, we are tempted to conclude that the first ad is better. This is until we look at the two groups together and see that the first ad is worse than the second one, because the first ad has a lower overall clicks rate. Why is the finding consistent across the two groups, but it's not true anymore if we look at it at an aggregated level? Basically, the overall trend differs from trends in segments or subgroups. With this example, it's clear why Simpson paradox can be an issue. It's hard to draw conclusions from the data when the data tells us two opposing stories at the same time. Now, you might be wondering, 
which conclusion is correct and which data should we trust? Well, both cases are possible. Let me explain. Suppose I tell you that the first group contains only iOS users and the second group only has Android users. So there's a difference between these two groups of users. Then it's possible the operating systems people have can affect the user's experience and influence the click's rate. If we have this assumption or hypothesis, we should look at the groups separately. In other words, we study a specific group of users who use iOS or Android instead of a mix of users. Now, if I tell you that there's no difference between these two groups of users at all, they are homogeneous in terms of demographic, browsing behavior, and any other factors we care about. In that case, it does not make much sense to look at the disaggregated view because we could consider the two groups as one big group. As you can tell, both cases are possible. Sometimes the aggregated view is correct, and sometimes the disaggregated view is correct. People might be tempted to think that the divided view is always better because it contains more information. But it's possible that disaggregating an additional variable provides confusing or even misleading information. Without enough understanding of the data and the domain knowledge, it's hard to know which view of the relationship between these variables makes more sense. In our case, it's which ad is better for our users. Now, let's talk about when does Simpsons paradox occur. Is there any way to get a heads up that it might occur? Let's talk about when it happens. Simpsons paradox appears when we have unbalanced data set for each pair of segments. Basically, the sampling is not uniform, and the sample size of each segment is different from the other. This might be simply due to the way that the data has been partitioned into subgroups or due to another variable of factor impacting the results. In the example we talked about earlier, we have the same amount of total impressions of ad 1 and ad 2, but there is a major disparity in the number of impressions between group 1 and group 2. It means we did not have balanced sample sizes between each pair when doing the analysis. For ad 1, the number of impressions was similar across the two groups. So we would expect its overall clicks rate to be halfway between the rates for the two groups. But for add two, the first group was much larger and also has a significant higher clicks rate. So we would expect the ad's overall rate to be closer to that for group one. You will want to pay particular attention to differences in sample sizes that vary considerably in size. Another way to understand when and why Simpsons paradox happens is to think about underlying explanations for your data, which is a wise idea when examining any analytical results. What underlying unseen factors might be influencing the results you are seeing? A common factor may impact both the subgroup's assignment and the outcome. In the previous example, you might ask yourself what other factors associated with and differentiates those subgroups, such as age, geographic location, or device type might be influencing the result. As I mentioned earlier, if group 1 is iOS users and group 2 contains only Android users, then device type may be a factor impacting ads click's rate. That might explain why Simpson paradox is happening. By looking into factors that may influence the assignment of groups and asking yourself such questions, you'll be prepared to identify Simpson's paradox when it occurs. To summarize, Simpson paradox occurs when splitting the data causes certain subgroups to have an imbalanced representation compared to other groups. It might be simply due to the way the data has been partitioned into groups or due to another variable or factor impacting the result. Now, let's do a quick recap before we end this video. We covered Simpson's paradox, which is a common occurrence in practice. It describes the situation in which the overall trend differs from trends in segments or subgroups. The lesson here is that we need to be cautious when drawing conclusions from data collected from multiple groups or segments or different percentages. The obvious conclusion might not be correct. And now you know it can be explained by Simpson's paradox. I hope I have done a good job explaining Simpson's paradox to you. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel to get more content like this. I appreciate your support. See you soon.